Imran Khan, the arbitrarily arrested former Pakistani Prime Minister, has said he's running to be Oxford's new Chancellor from jail because the university helped him in his early years and he wants to give back. Mr Khan, held now for 390 days, told The Telegraph from his prison cell that he would be a passionate advocate for the university where he studied more than 50 years ago. Imran Khan said, and quote, Oxford University helped me a lot in my formative years. As Chancellor, I would passionately advocate for Oxford, championing its values of diversity, equality and inclusion, both in the UK and abroad. I'm committed to giving back to the world the resilience, determination and integrity that life has taught me, even when the odds are stacked against me." Unquote. Analysts believe Imran Khan is the frontrunner in the race given his stellar profile in the public service from philanthropy to education to being a world-class athlete. Former Prime Minister Imran Khan has said, and quote, Terrorism in Balochistan will only end when the elected representatives of Balochistan are brought to the table, unquote. Mr Khan was speaking to reporters during the politically motivated jail trial inside the Adyala prison. Imran Khan, while condemning the military government's contradictory statements, also said, and quote, Terrorism is destroying the country. TTP's terrorism will end with the cooperation of the Afghan Taliban, unquote. Pakistan has seen a wave of terrorism throughout the country as its distracted security and intelligence agencies hound Imran Khan's party. The family of former Prime Minister Imran Khan has said he's been kept in harsh conditions since the entire jail staff was recently changed. Alima Khan, Imran Khan's sister, while addressing the media outside the Adyala jail said, and quote, The Deputy Superintendent of Police, Tahir Shah, was abusive with Imran Khan when he tried to speak to the media, unquote. She also said that the former Prime Minister is not being allowed to speak to his children, nor is he being given books to read. Earlier this week, journalists reported that Mr Khan was given dirty, sand-filled water in a bucket to shower with while there is an open sewer in his cell. Pakistan's military intelligence agencies are controlling the jail where Imran Khan is being held in solitary confinement. The business community, or traders, as they are referred to in Pakistan, closed their shops in major cities and towns to protest higher electricity costs, new taxes and rising prices of goods. In Karachi, Pakistan's financial hub, the Association of Traders declared a complete shutdown of businesses, resulting in hundreds of millions of rupees of loss in the economy. Chairman of the association, Atik Mir, claimed that the one-day shutdown strike inflicted a financial loss of over 50 billion rupees on wholesalers and retailers nationwide. Pakistan's military government has imposed unprecedented taxes on goods and increased energy prices to meet the IMF's demands, which has yet to approve a new loan. Abdul Rahim Kakar, president of the Traders' Union of Balochistan, said if the government doesn't fulfill traders' demands, the strikes could escalate into protests and sit-ins. Hundreds of occupational Israeli troops conducted overnight raids in the occupied West Bank, killing at least 10 people. The Palestinian Authority presidency condemned occupational forces' assault and warned it could usher in dire and dangerous results. Israeli assaults on refugee camps and towns in the West Bank are a new daily occurrence and have intensified. The scale of the current attack raises questions about its timing and motives, according to analysts quoted by Al Jazeera. Israel has killed over 40,000 Palestinians, mostly women and children, since the war began on October 7th last year.